Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you the first things to do after setting up your Xiaomi Redmi Pad 2. Once your device was set up, as in my case, uh, there are a few things that are worth doing after the setup to ensure your device works properly, works smoothly, securely, and also that it is quite convenient and personalized and ta tailored just for you. So let's click on continue here once my setup is complete and let's begin. The first step is gonna be just checking if we have Wi-Fi connection. You can see I have it because it displays the Wi-Fi symbol up here and Wi-Fi will be needed for most of the further steps. That's why I'm showing you this. So um, let's go to the settings, then Wi-Fi, make sure Wi-Fi is enabled. And then if there is a network that's on a blue background, that means that it has been connected. If not, then uh, try selecting a available network and um, try connecting to it. Once that's done, go to About Tablet first. Then click on your Xiaomi HyperOS at the top and start checking for available updates. You can see that it says I have no updates available. That's quite great. Uh, but if you had any, then I highly recommend just clicking on Download and Install. Later on, it will also prompt you to restart your device. And it's pretty important to make sure that your device runs smoothly, securely, and has the newest features. Now if I go back, then I can go to System Apps Updater, and here are gonna be some system apps. Let's check which ones are those. Okay, let's update all of them. Now I'm gonna continue, and updating apps is important for the very same reason as updating your device, but also some apps just won't work without an update. Now, let's sign into a Google account if you haven't done that yet. There's a high chance you have, but if you don't or don't know, go to Additional Settings. Now, go to Accounts and Sync. If under Accounts you don't have any Google account listed, that means that you don't have a Google account signed in. And signing in is my, in, a, in my opinion, a good choice because first of all, it gives you access to Google Play Store and second of all, you have access to some other um, Google services, including Find My, which lets you track your device if it gets lost or stolen. Um, let's click on Add Account, now click on Google. <clears throat> then um, it'll start checking some information, so let's wait a moment. Now enter the email or phone number associated with the Google account you want to add or click on create account if you don't have any. I know it has crashed right now and it's because it's probably updating Google services at the moment. So I'll just need to wait until then and I'll get back to you when it works. I was able to uh, enter it after like a minute or so. So let's click on next now uh, after the email or phone number was entered. Uh, then let's enter the password. Now just click on enter. And it'll go further. Now you need to accept the Google Terms of Service. Without that, you won't be able to add the account. By the way, feel free to click on those blue texts to actually add um, to read the um, terms and policies. Now it'll ask you if you want to back up your device data. And I think it's better to leave that enabled so you don't lose your data in case anything happens to your device. Let's click on accept. Now, I believe that the Google account was added, although it seems quite weird because it went to the home screen, so there's a chance that in your case there will be more questions later. Um, I think, but I can't be sure. I'm just gonna double check if I have the account added. As I said, the device was just set up, so it's normal for it to update things. 
And yes, I have the account added, so that gives us access to the Play Store. Let's open the Play Store, since we can now. And I'm gonna just click on no thanks, then my profile icon in the top right corner, and I'll see my apps and games. Then, you'll see updates. Let's retry them. Let's check for updates. It actually turns out that everything was updated. But if in your case there are any updates here, I'd highly recommend just clicking on uh, Update All. Now, let's go to setting up our screen lock. Because you may notice now that if I lock the screen, if I slide up, it just opens without any um, lock screen, and it's not too good. I don't want other people accessing my device, so let's go to settings. In settings, simply go to uh, the face data and screen lock and click on screen lock. Now you can set it to pattern, pin or password. Of course, if your screen lock is already set, then it will say screen lock on. You don't have to do anything unless you want to change your screen lock, but um, if you don't have it, then it's uh, good to enable it, but before you do that, please make sure that you will remember it because in case you forget it, there will be no way to restore your device other than erasing all the data. Uh, and that's not really something that I like to do myself. Uh, I don't want to lose the data, uh, but I think it's still worth to have the screen lock so no one else has access to the device. Uh, let's. I'm going to select pattern. Mm, which is going to be connecting dots. You can also select pin, which is going to be numerical, or password alpha numerical. Uh, now click on got it after five seconds. It tells me a few things that I already know, that if you slide up from the right side, then you can see it just opens the place to enter the pin pattern or password in a different place on the screen so you don't have to move your finger around too much. Um, now I'm gonna draw something simple but feel free to set it to something more complex if you uh, feel like you will remember it. And uh, now there is also face unlock and I don't recommend setting it up because on this tablet uh, it only bases on the camera, which means that it can be unlocked with a photo of you or by someone who looks similar to you. And I just don't find it too secure. I don't want to do that. Uh, now let's see how the screen lock works. I'm just gonna turn the screen off. Now let's turn it on. And you can see if I slide up, now I need to enter my screen lock. And as it showed me before, if I slide on the right side, it'll dis display the place to enter the pattern on the right side of the screen. Now, uh, once that's done, uh, we'll need to go to the settings. Go to the settings and find the battery. Now go to, I believe, battery protection. And make sure that it's set to smart charging. Smart charging lets your, uh, learns your charging habits and um, adjusts the charging patterns accordingly. So, uh, for example, if you plug your tablet in at night, as you go to sleep, it'll charge to 80% then pause, and, um, <clears throat> and later on it'll resume the charging about an hour before you're expected to unplug it, so it doesn't overcharge overnight. Now, um, let's change our wallpaper. I think that that's something that lots of people do. Of course, if you don't want to do that, you can skip it, and the wallpaper can be set from a library provided by Xiaomi, or from a photo that you've taken, transferred from your previous device, or downloaded from the internet. I'm gonna take a photo because I don't have any. Let's just open the camera. Now I'm gonna access location by that's optional, of course. Let's take a simple photo. It's not gonna be too pretty, but at least something. Now, if I go to the settings, you'll see uh, the option, personalization. Now, you can find, a, as I said, the library of different wallpapers available here. Mm, and, of course, 
you may like some of those. Feel free to like them. But if you want to set something different, first I'm gonna show you how to set something from the library. So just select a photo, then click on, you can do some effects here. If you wish, some blur or glass effect, matte uh, glass as well. Feel free to do that. Um, then you can also customize the clock here. No, you can't. I thought you can. Now if I click on apply, I can set it as lock screen, home screen, or both. If I set it as both, then it's applied. And you can see it. Now if I want to set a picture as my wallpaper, I think I need to go to the gallery first. Let's allow all access. And now let's select the photo that I want to set. It's not too pretty, so probably I'm not gonna set it, but I'm gonna show you how to. Just click on three dots in top right corner, set as wallpaper, allow all. And now the process is exactly the same as it was earlier through the settings. Now, uh, one of the last things is gonna be uh, uninstalling some bloatware. There's not too much bloatware on this device, but I think that opens the Google. Okay, so I believe that there is not such thing as app library, which means that all apps are on the home screen. And let's uninstall some of those. And TikTok, of course, can be uninstalled, but if you use it, then you can keep it. Uh, Timu, if you don't want it, feel free to just click on the trash icon but after pressing and holding, then click on uninstall. Then like some coloring, you can keep it, of course, it's totally okay. Then I think that LinkedIn, WPS Office, Netflix and Spotify also can be uninstalled based on your preference. And that's basically it. Thankfully, this tablet does not install too much bloatware, so uh, you don't have to deal with that. There are some tablets that do install a lot and here is just not the case, so I'm happy about it. Now the last step, slide down from the left top part of your screen, because you can see as you slide down from the right top part, you'll open the quick settings and from the left top part, you'll open notifications and you'll have a notification about finish sen uh, finishing setting up your device. And let's click on that, then click on start. Now this question is pretty important. It asks you if you want to use uh, another device to transfer data from it to your uh, tablet. And if you skip it here, then that option may become unavailable in the future, uh, which means uh, that you will be able to do it using third party apps, but the native method won't be available. And um, I think the native method is the best because it actually gives you the most functionalities and it's the most reliable one. I'm gonna skip it, but if you select Android device or iPhone or iPad, then you'll just have all the instructions what to do in order to copy those data. Mm. And of course it will be very, very intuitive. Everything will be shown step by step on the screen. After a moment of loading, you'll see this screen mo maybe, and if you see it, then this is the last time you'll be asked about copying apps and data. After that, it will be unavailable. So it's be better to do it if you wanna do it. Now, let's click on more. Then you can agree or not uh, to nearby share, which lets other people uh, that you have in contact um, share with you files, the, the, the different types of files, like AirDrop on iPhones. I can agree to, to that. Now, um, let's click on continue, and you can enable or disable Hey Google, which lets you activate Gemini by saying Hey Google out loud without um, pressing any buttons. Feel free to turn it on. You may need to set it up by saying four phrases out loud. I already have it set up on my account, so probably it won't ask me about the voice match setup. Now you can also do a few more things here. I'm gonna just click on no thanks, and it's basically done. Feel free to use your tablet now and 
I hope the video was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.